from Paul. Paul asks, I am a student from Germany using your online training programs for seniors. I'm still a beginner learning how to do it, um, but I've got a question concerning the head voice. All right. And the question is, why do singers tend to rise in volume when they move into the head voice? Why do singers rise in volume when they move to the head voice? That's a very interesting question. I don't really have a problem with going louder, but it seems to me that pro singers, professional singers, can go to their head voice without having to go up in volume. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's not call it pro, just people with experience and skills. So my actual question for training is, Paul Gray from Germany, should I, as a more or less beginner, try to go up in volume? Should I increase my volume? Because it might be simple to get to the head voice this way. Or should I try to stay on one volume level while learning to bridge to the head voice? I hope you understand. I do because I've been doing this for many, many years. But I will, I will uh, translate that question. Um, voice coaches, notice what's happening here. It's an important skill that I want to help you guys with uh, because students don't all know the talk track the technique and the things and they're they're students they don't they you know they're they're learning they're they're beginners they, they're, they're learning all of this you, you need to be able to take a question and literally sort of unpack the question and find the question inside okay and then re translate it in a way that makes more sense and you want to do that with your students so you get something like like why do singers tend to rise in volume when they move high into the head voice? I don't think I can do that, but should I? Should I rise in volume as I go to the head voice? That I, I, I feel like that's what I hear. I'm Paul from Germany, um, and from my perspective as a coach, I'm listening to this question, and it's sort of got elements of nonsense to it, because, but that's not Paul's fault. It's just that Paul doesn't really, you know, he's a beginner. He doesn't understand what's going on. So, so um I'm going to reinterpret this question to really simply mean, here's what, here's what Paul's really trying to say. Paul's trying to say, when I try to train, when I bridge from the chest voice through my passaggio into my head voice, there's an element of elegance and sort of lightness to it, which would, which would probably be expected if you're a beginner and you're not wanting to push okay but when I listen to professionals and famous singers that have the strength and motor skills developed it sounds like they're the or Robert when I listen to you do it you know it sounds big it sounds like you're increasing your volume all right so so as a beginning student, is that something I should do? Should I try to increase my volume as I'm working on my bridging and connecting skills? Um, interesting question. And, and I would say, no, don't, don't. The, the, first of all, let's just make sure that we're clear on the fact that this is not, this is not, um, a, the volume isn't increasing. It's not like I'm stepping up to the volume knob on my ghetto blaster or on my, on my PA system and turning up the volume. That's not what's happening. It's important to, to get a good answer on this and get a good understanding. It's important that, we, that we're clear on the difference between volume and amplification. It's not the same thing. Volume is, is just turning the knob up and getting louder. And that's not what I want you to do. In singing, volume would be sort of be sort of like, I'm gonna push, I'm gonna blow harder, I'm gonna constrict harder, I'm gonna squeeze harder on the glottis. And that those things can create more volume, all right? But that's not why 
That's not what I want you to do. That's why I don't want Paul to, to be training with the with this idea that I'm going to add that he's going to add more volume because if he's thinking I'm going to add more volume as I work on my bridging and connecting skills, what that will what that will translate to is he'll start pushing, he'll start squeezing, he'll start he'll unpack a whole bunch of new problems that he probably didn't have before, but now he's got these other problems because he's trying to add volume as he's doing this delicate finesse maneuver of bridging chest voice to head voice and trying to sound big and boomy in the head voice. All right? So no, don't increase your volume, Paul, from Germany, which by the way, Germany, I love Germany. It's just a wonderful country. Um, I love going there. Uh, so what do you do? I want you to change your mental imagery from from in anything you do. It could be your Reaching to the head voice, singing the head voice, it could be singing something easy in your chest voice, all of it. All of you guys, not just Paul, stop thinking about adding volume and getting louder. Don't do that because that, that unpacks a bunch of problems, like physical problems. What I want you to do is be thinking about amplifying formants. Don't get louder, amplify your vowels, amplify your resonance balance and amplify your formants on every single note that you're working on. on, on, on from the simplest warm-up to something complex, a big, aggressive, heroic bridging maneuver. Be thinking about amplifying yourself. Now, as you amplify your, the harmonics, you amplify the, the formant, you amplify your resonance, you might get a little louder, but that's okay. If getting a little bit louder is a symptom of, of amplifying, thinking about amplifying your vowels and your formats better, then that's good. And in fact, that is in fact what happens. You want a little more volume, don't think about turning up the volume. Think about balancing and amplifying your formats and your vowels better. Think about how you're controlling and amplifying the resonance, the resonance that you're producing when you release into vowels. All right. So, for example, um, this is me trying to add volume. That might be sort of fun or funny or whatever, and I could even imagine that distortion working for a, maybe a brief, brief moment in a performance or something, perhaps. But in training, you would never want to do that because you also saw my voice broke, there was pushing, there was squeezing, there was a, it was a mess. It was just a, a, a flipping mess, all right? Now, this is more or less the same movement, but I'm not thinking about adding volume, which takes me down a path of pushing and squeezing it's a tar baby what i'm thinking about more really is and in some sense it's been sort of the thing today i'm going to listen to my sound color make sure i'm not nasal make sure it's a lovely color and all i want to do is amplify all i want to do is balance the energy okay will i get a little a little more volume out of that probably probably but that's not what i'm going for I, what I'm going for is a beautiful color and a nice balanced amplified resonance. Alright. I'm not thinking when I did that, I'm not thinking get louder. I'm thinking I'm thinking balance the resonance, amplify the resonance. Now, the other important point about volume versus amplifying is most singers, even classical singers, they're using these. Okay, this is, this is a tool that singers use. It's called a microphone, all right? And it's designed to amplify your voice. So this is another really important, obvious reason not to be thinking, I got to get louder, I got to shout, I got to get louder. Why? Why? You're going to mess up the balance of your resonance, you're going to start pushing, and you don't need to anyways because you have a microphone in your hand. All right? And if you don't have a microphone, most people do, but if you don't have a microphone in your hand, then you're, you're in the bathroom, you're in a concert, 
hall. You're you're in you're in a stairwell. You're in a space that 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 has ambience in it, and it sort of amplifies itself. Just the resonance in the space. Okay, that's another way of getting amplified. All right. So I hope that answers your question, Paul. And um, by the way, it's great to have you as a student. And I've uh, done so many master classes in Germany. I can't even remember uh, how many. Maybe ten or twelve. Um, this last uh, spring, we were in Ansbach. Ansbach. Um, I believe that's in Bavaria, um, uh, sort of near Nuremberg. Uh, I've got a lot of really wonderful friends in Germany um, and uh, teachers in Germany as well. So, anyways, um, that's a good off point, but that's it. Stop trying to get louder and start trying to amplify and balance your performance. Okay? So, that was easy. Cool. Paul, thank you for a very interesting question.